Hickok 45 and a couple of interesting pieces of hardware on the shooting table. Both of them are 629s, 44 Magnum from Smith & Wesson. You might notice a little difference. You've got one from the Performance Center called the Competitor. And you've got a classic one made in the early 80s. 629s, both of them though. Same chambering, same round. In fact, let's just shoot this one. Let's blast something. Oh, there's a wasp on that two liter. Look, let's surprise him. <laughs> ah, wonder where he is now. We'll smoke a little wet pot here. <laughs> Still got a little smoke out of it. Yeah, woo, it's hard. How about a two liter over here? Oh, man, feels like a 44 Magnum. I do believe it is. There's another round. I wonder if I can hit the gong. Oh, if I can hold it up. <laughs> Popped him. Oh, yes. 44 mag. Nothing like it. And uh, it does have a fairly heavy barrel. You can see it can't with that thing. So I'm always on the uh, lookout for cool firearms used firearms they don't have to be something that just came out as you know well know and i don't know how long this thing's been uh manufactured by the performance center but i think it's still listed on their website uh 1550 bucks uh so it's not cheap but it's it's called the competitor so it's kind of a competition gun maybe a hunting uh, version uh so whatever you want to do with it Kind of harkens back in a way to the old PPC competition guns, a police pistol competition where they get these heavy barrels and shoot really light loads around barricades and stuff. I never did do that, but I used to watch some of it. Uh, I don't know where I was watching it on some of the cable channels somewhere or on video, but uh, it, I, I guess it could serve two or three purposes. It's just a plinking gun. It's got a really heavy front end, as you can tell. You got a rail there, so you can do all kinds of things with that. So you might just want something like this to help absorb recoil uh, and to target shoot. Just depends on what you're doing with it. So uh, kind of an interesting firearm. I don't think the barrel's heavy enough. John and I decided it's not. You see it's empty. So I'm gonna turn it around. And John and I went to the wood, uh, the workshop and we, we found some pipe and created these little uh, rings and we <clears throat> kind of drilled and tap under the barrel. I hope Smith & Wesson doesn't get upset with us for modifying their gun. And we found a bolt that would fit and it'll hold all that in there. How's that? So they left that big hole there, so we thought we'd do something with it. And uh, a little system for adding weight. And you could add two of those or three of them or whatever you want. We'll just put them all in. So we're working on a patent right now on that, John and I are. Did you believe that? surely you're not that gullible now this came out of the performance center that's that's part of the package is that weight system oh, now it's so heavy i can't hold it but you can add weight to it uh the weight that you prefer it's kind of like my tractor you know i have five or six weights that i that i hook on the front of it so if i want a lot of weight up there or a little weight uh it's mainly to keep from rearing up on you, you know, depending on what you're doing with the tractor uh well that's kind of what this is about keeps it from I guess rearing up on you you know and as much uh, muzzle flip so anyway interesting gun uh, you can see it's got uh, fiber optic sights it's got a really nice re adjustable rear sight and uh, it's got a performance center trigger you know it's got a very nice trigger on it too so let's take a couple more shots like that. let's see I got some in my pocket so again, we appreciate uh, Bud's uh, lending this to us. It'll be on eGunner. And uh, like I said, it's a used gun. It seems uh, in really new condition. Uh, I haven't noticed any big blemishes or problems. Oh, uh, it does have a laser that does not work, but that's probably just a battery issue. I don't know, there's a little button right there on those grips. Uh, so yeah, it's a used gun from, from Bud. So there you go. Uh, interesting <laughs> interesting gun and the ammo is from federal we appreciate the support from federal as well of course we're shooting uh 240 grain a classic weight and a 44 magnum uh jacketed uh, hollow points Ooh, 
No wonder they're so powerful. Okay. And they are powerful. I have shot them quite a bit now. Uh, let's put a couple on this paper too later, see if it'll explode. I'll have to try to put it right where the cross, the creases cross there in the middle. Whoo! Well, I can't do any better than that. Let's see if we can knock the cap off of it. Whew, loud. There's some pot that needs smoking right there. <laughs> oh, man. And another two liter or two. Forty-four Magnum. Shot a lot of it in my day. No doubt. Oh, there's a 12 answer hiding behind the filing cabinet. Boy, disintegrated. Click. All right. And those have got some, some thrust behind them. Uh, yeah, I might as well shoot a couple more of them. On the, I'm going to go across the hill. See if I can hit the red plate. The sights seem right on, and those fiber optic sights really jump out at you. Okay, Let me try the red one. Wow, banged it hard. Let's try a goat. Wow, that go high. <laughs> it's pretty hard man hey we might as well hit the gong again boom wow hey, I'm going to try that turkey Yeah, that'd be a pretty good hunting outfit. It really would. Uh, now, John and I have both shot it. My impression though, when I first shot the thing, uh, if you're expecting it to be a firearm, that because of that weight, that front end, and uh, the extreme weight there, kind of, it's really barrel heavy, and it's supposed to be. Uh, if you're expecting that to absorb all the recoil, like I kind of was when I <laughs> touched off the first shots before the video, you might be surprised, as was I. I it really comes back at you. I, I think there might be some kind of dynamic there where, and that doesn't hurt you. You know, if you're hunting with it, it's not a big deal or anything, of course. But it, it doesn't uh, absorb the recoil as much as I would have expected. I, I really think if I went in and got my Model 29 8 and 3 8 inch barrel, which it's a lot lighter than that on the front end, even though it's a longer barrel. I think it would absorb the recoil better. I, I think what happens is, uh, you know, I used to teach physics at Vanderbilt, of course, and at MIT. <laughs> Pretty funny, huh? But I, I think what it must be is, it, with all that weight, it's not going to rise. And so what thrust you do get, recoil, it's straight back at you or something. So, yeah, you don't get as much muzzle flip but maybe you're getting more of it straight back, something like that, I don't know. Uh, just, just a wild guess. Uh, but I think this concept is probably most popular for competitions where you're shooting lighter loads. That's a lot of it, and that's what I'm about to do. Uh, Federal also loads 44 Special, which I didn't even have for a good while. So let's try something a little bit lighter. These are, let's see, what are these, 200 grain, yeah. Good old lead. Well, these are kind of classic 44 special lead bullets. You notice how the, the burn marks around the, the cylinder that you get after you fire them a while, but that cleans off. All right. 44 special. This should be a little more pleasant. Now, I don't know if the point of impact will change dramatically. I'll try a pig up there. Usually I can see where I'm missing on those. Not that I plan to miss, but you know. Well, I lied. I didn't see where I missed, but. Let's 
try again. Oh, okay, I was going low. That's why I wasn't seeing it. So I brought the sights up a little bit, up on the pig. Yeah, same there. I held right in the middle of it, and it hit it. Uh, so that's what you do when you're shooting. You kind of, oops, two more rounds. Then you experiment with uh, your hold, as I call it. And I keep thinking we'll do a video on hold, but all hold is, all I mean is, uh, like if I'm shooting a filing cabinet with a really hot round, if I line the sights up right on the handle of that drawer, right on it, well, a really hot round, let's say for example, maybe it hits it right in the handle, right where I'm holding and release the trigger. Well, then a lighter load, maybe like this, uh, and for whatever reason, takes it longer to get out the barrel, or it, it just can affect, that doesn't affect windage, it shouldn't, but it can affect elevation. So with the exact same sight picture on the handle, I mean exact, exactly the same, when I touch off a 44 Special, it might print, it might hit it, uh, you know, like that much lower or that much higher than the other one did, okay? So that's what I mean by hold. And, you know, because it just changes. Uh, this is a pretty good feeling little gun now, with these 44 Specials. Let's try uh, another turkey over there. Couldn't get the, uh, the elevation up there. There you go. You all know what I mean that do a lot of shooting. You know, sometimes you, you get on, I mean, you, it really, you feel steady. Like then I felt really steady. I was right on the turkey, but I was on the lower part of it, on the stem. And I, I knew that I need to get it up just a little higher. And I was trying to do it without, you know, moving too much or shaking right left and all that kind of thing and uh, you know what I mean if you shoot a lot you know, sometimes you just uh, can't quite get the sights exactly where you know they ought to be yeah these are much more fun and that's the versatility of of course the 44 magnum or 357 magnum so yeah it's uh it's it's performance center gun like I say it runs 1550 so it says on their website, the MSRP, I don't know what they might, uh, they might just sell, that might be the only price you get because I think the performance center stuff is a little different. You're not gonna go in and find five of them at this gun shop and five over there. So uh, you probably have a harder time finding a, a price break on that, I don't know. Uh, so a, a nice gun actually. It would just depend on whether or not this is your cup of tea. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of anything unusual about it that you know, you've got adjustable trigger travel you uh, that weight system is pretty unique and uh, it's a it's a heavy gun heavy gun well, let's just shoot this guy double action right here <laughs> oh thanks drenched my pants mm. yeah you could shoot these all day right mr. cowboy And let's try, let's shoot the gong. You'll, you'll notice a difference in how long it takes to get there. Yeah. A little more of an interval, yeah. You notice that release the cylinder latch? Uh, I don't know if the performance center put that on there or somebody put that on afterwards. That's a Hogue, as you can tell, it says right on it. That's, I mean, it's handy. Uh, it's kind of in the way too for me. I don't, I, I don't love it. You know, the thing is, this is a different sort of animal. And so, you know, it's just not going to be a carry gun or anything. So I guess it doesn't matter that much. You know, I'm, I'm spoiled by the classics, you know, the old, the old standard, uh, Model 29, 629. So, I have to separate that brass on it. Well, let's go back to some Magnums here. 240 grain, 44 Magnum. Got a few in my pocket. Got a little piece of cinder right here that we need to address with this competition gun or this hunting handgun.
didn't take too many rounds. Uh, this is pretty hard on these close targets, I guess. Let's go ahead and shoot the cowboy anyway. Watch him, watch him rock. Oh, man. <laughs> it's hard. Let's go over there and hit something. Like another ram, maybe. So you need to hold a little bit lower. Takes him right down. What about Mr. Buffalo up there? We never shoot the Mr. Buffalo. All right, we're in the hump. And let's see, Tombstone down in the hole. <laughs> Knocks it around, one round left. Let's try Mr. Gong again. Again, notice how long this one takes to get there. Not long if I hit it. Yeah, boy, 44 Magnum. There's a lot of uh, really hot firearms out there now, 454s and the 500s and everything. I still say, as I always have, you know, uh, before you get too caught up in those, make sure you have fired a 44 Magnum with some stout loads. And those are off the shelf type you know, loads from American Eagle. They're pretty warm, I think. And I get all the kick I really need from that kind of ammo. If you like to shoot powerful guns, for most people, this standard 240 grain jacketed 44 Magnum is going to be enough to satisfy that itch, I think, really. Uh, it just depends on what you're doing. Uh, if you're going to fire something that's much more powerful than that on a regular basis, you probably want a bigger gun, maybe even a heavier gun than this. You might even want one of those contraptions I've heard about that they don't hurt your hand as much uh, as a gun like this would in a you know a giant caliber one of those uh, those things that uh, somebody came up with that has a stock on it and you put it on your shoulder it's a long gun okay if you're going to hunt elephants maybe you don't want it in a in a handgun i would recommend you you really experiment with with some of the hotter rounds maybe at a rental range or a friend's place and just make sure you want a 454 or a 500 or a 460 or whatever it might be although some of those guns are so big and so heavy that maybe they don't hurt you as much as uh, some of these lighter lighter guns you know so it just depends but try them before you buy them 44 magnum uh let's see i do need to shoot a couple more times where's the, the oh here it is 44 special Let's take a couple more shots. Again, we appreciate Bud's Gun Shop and uh, Federal Premium for helping us out here. And uh, this is, again, one of the many used guns that they buy from people or trade, take in trade or whatever. All right. Oh, what do we want to do? Let's see. Uh, I think it's cowboy time. We got some desperados. Empty, yeah. <laughs> ah, fun, fun, fun. So yeah, from the Performance Center, the uh, 44 Magnum, the 629 Competitor, it's called. So if you're into competition, have a purpose for a firearm like this, grab one. Uh, it's pretty interesting. I think there's enough mystique around the 44 Magnum. It's so popular, one of the most popular cartridges out there that sometimes even if you're not going to compete or you're not even going to hunt uh you might be attracted to something like this kind of the next step you know if you shoot a lot of 44 anyway it's just another uh uh another variation you know of what you already enjoy shooting i mean i, I can see you enjoy bringing something this, like this out and you know just shooting and playing with it's got a great trigger and uh it's you know from the performance center so it's well made of course so anyway, I'll clean her all up and send her back, and uh, you'll see her on E-Gunner. We'll stick the target in there with it. Uh, we're putting that in the box now. So uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. I have never even held one of these. Now I have held it, and I have fired it. So you know that life is good. <laughs> oh, well, since I'm still here, let me take this moment to thank uh, SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute, for their support of the channel. Uh, we appreciate you know, their help. Uh, SDI is a place where you can get certified in uh, gunsmithing. You can even get an associate's degree in firearms technology and work in various areas of the firearms field. Might be appealing to you. They work a lot with veterans 
and uh, it's just a pretty cool place. So check out the link, uh, sdi.edu. Uh, the link is in uh, the description of most videos, almost all videos for the last six months or more. So, uh, so check that out. Also, while I have you, since I'm still here, uh, be sure to, to check the links in all the descriptions because, you know, we're on Full 30 now also with all the videos. So there's a link in the, in the descriptions to Full 30, as well as, of course, our sponsors, uh, SDI, BudsGunShop.com, uh, Federal Premium. So all the good information is there, as well as uh, keep in mind that on Hickok 45 and Sun, we have uh, quite a few videos over there. John's doing the, the Gun Culture Radio Show over there. Check it out if you haven't done that yet. Our Facebook page, uh, the Hickok 45 Facebook, the uh, Hickok 45 and Son Facebook page. That's where we try to stay in touch with you and uh, give you a little extra information. Even post pictures and uh, a little video occasionally, just, just whatever. Uh, mainly just a way to keep up with you all and provide some more information. You know, we're not really Facebookers, but it's a, it's a pretty good system for that, even though most of us are not in love with Facebook, right? <laughs> so check all that out. And you really had better check it out because I might just have to come to your house and have a chat with you if you don't. And I expect to have coffee and donuts ready when I get there. All right.